Hi again, this is Pastor Jeff from Community Covenant Church. I'm glad you're able to join us for today's message. Um, there's a good chance that you may have um, experienced somebody saying that they've been called by God. And normally our association with that phrase would be they've been called into ministry, called to be a pastor, called to be a missionary, some kind of full-time ministry related to uh, serving God in that kind of way. But the reality is that all of us who are followers of Jesus have been called. We've been called to be his disciples, to be his followers. In fact, in Ephesians chapter 4, Paul says, Therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. So here is Paul saying, yes, I have been called by God. I'm a prisoner for the Lord because of my missionary and my preaching. But we all need to follow this calling because we all have been called by God. <clears throat> Paul is addressing here the entire church, a church made up of lay people. I mean, were there any official pastors of these churches at the beginning of the Christian era? I don't know. But all of everybody has been called to be a fully devoted follower of Christ. And we are called to serve God in whatever place, in whatever way that God has prepared for us. So I'm bringing this up because we are continuing in our um, look at the prophet Elijah, his life and his ministry. And in 1 Kings 19, God instructs Elijah to go and appoint and uh, anoint a, an apprentice for him. Um, somebody who would be his successor. So we're picking up in 1 Kings chapter 19, in which um, it says, God's telling Elijah, anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, from the town of Abel Mahola, to replace you as my prophet. So Elijah went and found Elisha, son of Shaphat, plowing a field. There were 12 teams of oxen in the field, and Elisha was plowing with the 12th team. Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak across his shoulders and then walked away. Now notice that Elijah finds Elisha at work on the family farm. And the fact that there were 12 teams of oxen plowing this field means that Elisha was a part of a very wealthy family. Um, that'd be like, you know, having 12 tractors working in the field of your family farm. So Elijah goes up to Elisha and he throws his cloak over Elisha's shoulders. And then he just walks away. Doesn't have to say anything. It's just, you know, this mic drop moment. So what's that all about? Well, prophets in this time wore a special kind of cloak. It was made of animal hair and identified them in their role as a prophet of the Lord. Elijah didn't even need to really say anything to Elisha to communicate his intention. He was throwing the cloak over his shoulders, which was a symbolic act of calling him to be his special follower, special apprentice, somebody working with him. It's a promise that not only was he being called in this, but then he would be given the gifts that he was needing to fill, uh, fulfill this role and carry out the calling to be a prophet. Now, Elisha, definitely, I mean, we may question, well, what in the world are you doing? Elisha had no doubt no question about it. He clearly understood in verse 20. It says, Elisha left the oxen standing there, ran after Elijah, and said to him, First, let me go and kiss my father and mother goodbye, and then I will go with you. So he knew that Elijah was calling him to leave his old life and go into this new life, so that he wanted to just end things well with his parents. Why was Elisha so ready and willing to just drop his old life and start this new one? I think there's, it's pretty obvious by his response that God had been preparing Elisha for this moment. Um, God told Elijah to go to this particular guy. So God had already been doing something in Elisha's life. Maybe Elisha had been thinking about his relationship with the Lord. Maybe he'd been even seeing Elijah at work as a prophet and, and going, boy, what if I did that? What if I was a part of that ministry there? And God may have even spoken to Elisha specifically saying, you are being called 
to be my prophet. You know, being called into full-time ministry is obviously a bigger step of commitment with different responsibilities than those who haven't been. We've all been called, but those who are called into that role have a whole different set of responsibilities. And is it more important? Um, does that mean that a Christian who is not a pastor, somebody in, like in my role, is not as valuable than than everybody else? Or I mean, the, the people who aren't called are not as valuable? Um, is there some kind of a hierarchy of importance of ministry? How do you feel that God looks on you as somebody is who is not a full-time minister? Does God think less of you? Well, I hope you're not functioning with that kind of mindset because that's not the way it is with God. God, I don't believe that God thinks that way, first of all, for all of us. In Romans chapter 12, um, verses 6 to 8, Paul writes this. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you're a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have the gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. It's important to recognize that God can and does use his people in different ways. Each of us have been gifted and prepared by God to do something unique to us and the place and the ministry that he has for us. And every part is just as important. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you may remember, Paul uses this image of the different parts of a body. A finger has a different part than a um, arm or an elbow or a or the shoulders. Every part is important. If you don't have that, you are missing out on something. You want to have the full parts of the body. In other words, you want to have every person working together and doing what God has prepared them to do so that together they can function well. Each part is important. Every single follower of Jesus has their part to play, and it's not about all doing the same thing. The bottom line is God calls us to be part of his mission in this world, and that's not limited to who you are uniquely and where you are. So back to this story. The question is, was Elisha serving God as a worker on his family farm? Was he only biding his time until he did the real stuff? Well, I don't believe so. Because as we just read, God uses each of us, you know, as he has prepared us and in different but equally important ways. Never think of yourself as less than just because you're not some upfront person or, or preaching or something like that. Every follower of Jesus is valuable. And so we each have significance in the kingdom of God. You don't need to be a full-time pastor or a missionary. In fact, I believe that your current position, the place where you work, the people that you are around, is a strategically valuable place for God's work to continue. Um, it may It's more strategic than, than myself. I am not in your place. I'm not in the relationships with you. I don't have that camaraderie. And so as a result, you are better prepared to be God's representative in those people's lives and to do that stuff. In fact, if I were to show up at your work and they go, oh, here's Pastor Jeff, then a lot of them would just kind of put up their barriers and go, uh, Pastor, I don't want anything to do with you. But you, as a co-worker, as a friend, have a voice into their life that I wouldn't have. You're already placed there. God can use you right where you are. Now, with that said, don't be content or set in your ways that you are going to stay exactly where you are with those opportunities that are right now in front of you. Be open to God of what he has more for us, what he wants to do that is different than what he's doing in you right now. Um, theologian Oz Guinness said this, calling is not only a matter of being and doing what 
we are, but also of becoming what we are not yet, but are called by God to be. So do you get that? God calling us is not just about being who we are right now, but being open to becoming who God is yet for us to become. Something that he wants us to grow into and, and even be more than what we are. So we need to be ready and open for what God is wanting to do. Are you open? Are you listening and ready to step into some new place of serving God? in some new way, perhaps at the same job in the same environment, but doing it in a different way because God is doing more in you. He's creating you to be a better representative of him. Now, in Elisha's case, God was preparing him to move from his role on the family farm to move into a apprenticeship with the prophet Elijah. And so he immediately responded. If we look at the next in verse 20, it says, Elisha left the oxen standing there, ran after Elijah and said, you know, first let me go and kiss my father and mother goodbye, and then I will go with you. He was ready to do that. Now, this idea of him going, first of all, to say goodbye to his parents may trigger a memory, if you are familiar with in the Gospel of Luke, where Jesus has this encounter with, with different people. He's calling people, follow me. And one of the people in Luke chapter 9 um, had this encounter. He said, yes, Lord, I will follow you, but first let me say goodbye to my family. But Jesus told him, anyone who puts a hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. So here was Jesus recognizing that in this case, with this particular person who wanted to go and say goodbye to his parents, which seems reasonable, Jesus knew this guy's intention was to put it off to find an excuse, to delay. He was hesitant to follow Jesus. And Jesus says, hey, don't be hesitant. Don't look for excuses not to follow me. You need to be willing. Full full case. Now, in Elisha's situation, this was not the case. Elisha wanted to um, approach this. You know, he, he says, you know, let me go, go. And so Elijah recognizes that Elisha is ready to serve and ready to be his apprentice. And so Elijah says, go back, but think about what I have done to you. Um, he, God was calling Elisha and God had instructed Elijah to go specifically to him. So this was God calling Elisha, not just Elijah saying, hey, come and follow me, be my assistant. This was Elijah bringing God's call, confirming maybe what Elisha had already been feeling God was calling him to. So Elijah says, go ahead and say goodbye to your parents and sort of wrap up things so that you can go and follow me. But remember, it's God who is calling you to be his prophet. So Elisha does just that. He goes and finishes things up. So in verse 21, it says, so Elijah, Elisha returned to his oxen and slaughtered them. And he used the wood from the plow to build a fire to roast their flesh. My goodness. He passed around the meat to the townspeople, and they all ate. And then he went with Elijah as his assistant. Wow, what a big thing. Oxen and plow was obviously the representation of his former life. He was working on the family farm. He, in this act, was saying, I am done I am moving on to a new life. I'm not turning back because I have nothing to turn back to. I am getting rid of it right now. It was a clear declaration. And I love that he celebrated this. He didn't just go and say, kiss mom and dad goodbye and then take off. He went through all the process and he invited the whole community to be a part of this. It was barbecue time. It was a big celebration of the whole community and townspeople. Now, you know, sometimes we read the Bible and it's kind of, the timeline is kind of compressed. You know, Elisha went and he did this, you know, he slaughtered the animals, he he burned them, he roasted, handed out the meat, and we just kind of think, okay, boom, 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 boom. How long did that take? You know, five minutes. No, no, no. How long does it take to slaughter a couple oxen? How long does it take to build a fire and roast the meat? How long does it take to gather the townspeople and have this food? This is a whole day's process, probably. Here was this whole event that was happened, and he's celebrating this with 
his community, with the people around him saying, God has called me to a whole new life. And I'm excited about this. And I want you to be a part of the celebration. A lot of time was there so that people were able to discuss this decision with Elisha. Elisha, what are you talking about? You're really going to go with Elijah? I mean, I've heard stories about this guy. Are you really ready to do that? You're going to leave the family behind? He was talking to his brothers and sisters and his parents about what it meant to do this. I'm sure that there was some pushback and some questioning, but there was also a lot of celebrating because here was God making a special call on Elisha to go and be apprenticed to Elijah and become God's prophet. He was making a all-in clear public declaration that my old life is over, I'm moving in to a new life. You know, there's a legend about um, the Spanish explorer and conquistador um, Hernan Cortez. He went and sailed to the New World from Spain, and he went and landed in, uh, in 1519 in the Veracruz, Mexico harbor. And he had 600 men, and the intention was to go and to conquer Montezuma and the Aztec nation. Now, other people had attempted to do just that. You know, they wanted to explore and, in the name of the king of, of Spain, go and take this new land um, as they expanded their empire. But they had failed in the past, others had. Now, Hernan Cortez had his 600 guys and his fleet of ships coming with the intention that they were going to conquer the Aztec nation. And he knew that this was going to be hard. I mean, they were way vastly outnumbered by the Aztecs. And he knew that also there would be a temptation, when, if it doesn't go smoothly, that his men would want to flee and go get on the ships and head back to Spain and just turn their tail on this. So, after bringing everyone ashore and all their provisions he ordered that the ships be destroyed. They would be burnt and sunk. And his men stood there on the shore watching their only possible retreat being destroyed so that they had no choice. They knew that there was no return. There was no turning back. Nothing lay behind them but empty ocean. Their only option was to go forward and to conquer or to die in the attempt. Just as Elisha burned his oxen and plow and committed completely to God, we're called to leave our self-centered previous lives behind and give ourselves completely and fully to God forever. And wherever he wants to lead us and however he wants to use us, that's the kind of commitment that God is calling us to do. It's, a, it's this all-in, no-turning-back kind of attitude. In Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, Paul writes, So, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he's done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. We've all been called to follow Jesus, every single one of us. Following Jesus in different ways, perhaps, but nonetheless, following Jesus fully without any hesitation. Total surrender to God and turning our back on our old life. A living sacrifice. Sacrifices are burning up your old life. But we're a living sacrifice because we're now moving ahead with God's guidance and his direction. We give our lives completely into his hands, and then his promise is that he will then transform the way we think. He will be working and changing us, leading us to his good and pleasing and perfect will of how he wants us to serve. He's going to prepare us. Just like Elijah called Elisha to be his apprentice and to take over as God's prophet after him, God 
God's promise was that not only would he call Elisha, but he would prepare Elisha for doing that work. God not only calls us to give a full 100% commitment to him, but he also promises that he's going to be transforming us. He's going to be preparing us. He's going to equip us to do exactly what he's going to call us to do. Now, it may be calling us to be God's representative exactly where we are in the same job, in the same community, in the same relationships that we have right now. And now we're working and living for God in that setting. Or maybe it's something new, a new place, a new way of doing that. We need to be open to listen to God's gentle whisper, like we talked about last week. We're quiet ourselves enough to listen and hear how God is speaking to our heart, or maybe even physically, um, audibly speaking to us. I don't know. That might happen. Let's not rule it out. We want to be quiet enough to be ready to receive from him. Our job, though, is to make that 100% commitment to go ahead, to let the past be the past, and then to be willing to burn your plow, um, burn the ship, uh, make an all-in commitment, not a hesitant one where I'm going to go back if it gets tough. I'm not going to turn back. I am going forward. I'm following Jesus. No turning back, just as the song goes. I've decided to follow Jesus. Let's follow Elisha's example and experience all that God has for us. Let's pray. God, thank you for your love. Thank you that you called each of us to be your follower. Lord, we want to be 100% fully committed to follow you. We don't want to do this sort of half-hearted thing where we're kind of tentatively staying in the world and staying with you, kind of straddling the fence. We want to all in experience what it means to be fully devoted to you. And that means we're willing to let the past go and only look forward as we follow where you're calling us and to be who you're calling us to be, to do what you're calling us to do. So Lord, I pray for each of us that we would quiet ourselves and listen and respond, ready to go forward, ready to be who you're calling us to be, right where we are, or maybe even be open to maybe something new, something that you have for us because it's what you desire us to become as we commit ourselves to you. You are going to do that transforming work from the inside out, the work that only you can do in us. But we have to be ready and willing to submit fully to be that living sacrifice. So God, it's exciting and it's a wonderful opportunity to be your representative in this world. And we're trusting that you are not only calling us, but you're preparing us for what you have for us. So God, thank you for the example of Elisha as we are ready to respond and move forward to serve you, however you're calling us. And we thank you and ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So God bless you as you choose to let the past be the past. Move forward and follow our Lord and Savior fully and um, with a anticipation of wonderful things that God wants to do in us and also do through us. So have a wonderful week, and I hope to see you soon. Take care.